Hi, in this video I'm going to dive into a subject which initially may not seem very sexy, but has quite a lot to know about it and it can be very handy. So stick around for a deep dive into markers and the marker tracking Cubase. Now when I start a new project in Cubase, or even when I get a project to mix in Cubase, I think it's an essential part of project organization to know where you are in the song. For example, where exactly does the song start? Where does the intro start? Where does the first verse start? The chorus, etc, etc. So that you can quickly navigate to those locations in the song. So let's have a look in Cubase. So this is a pretty big Cubase project with lots of tracks. I even have them in folder tracks. And I would like some kind of way to easily navigate between sections of the song. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a marker track. Click the plus icon. Indicate marker track over here. Add track. And I typically want to put that on top of all other tracks. And I even want to make sure that it always stays in view when I scroll down on a large project. And for that I usually enable the divide track list. Hang on, let me make this a little bit shorter so you can see it. I usually enable the divide track list over here. And then I put the marker track in the first section of the divided track list. So that even when I scroll down, the marker track always stays visible. Now I then typically go through the song and mark the important positions. For example, if I zoom in a bit, I can put the cursor where the count in starts, at the beginning for example. Note that I have enabled snap so that I'm always exactly at a whole bar position. And with this button, I can now add a position marker. And I can also name that marker by pushing the E button over here or using Ctrl M to open the Cubase marker window. And I can add a description, for example, count in. Now on the next significant position, I can add another marker and I can name it intro, for example. Over here, verse one starts. Next up, verse two. And next up, I can also push the plus button over here. I can say that this is course one, for example. Now you can see that the order has been messed up in this marker dialog a bit, but if I click on the position column, you can see that they are sorted on position again. Now if I wanted to, I could also add markers with the pencil tool. And again, I could name them in this dialog. If I want to move markers, I can just pick them up and drag them to a new location. I can also delete markers with the eraser tool. Let's undo this. And there's also an option to delete all markers to the right of the marker that you push by pushing Alt and clicking with the eraser at the same time. You see all those markers to the right of course one have now been removed. Now once you have markers, it's easy to navigate using the markers. For example, you can click on the marker here on the left. You can also use the locate button here to go to a certain marker. And that's actually easier because you can see the description of the marker. Now you can also use the number buttons on your keypad to move to markers. For example, I just pushed five, I push four, I go to marker four, push three, I go to marker three. It doesn't work like that for markers one and two because those are reserved for the locators, which are currently at the beginning of the project. You also have the B and N keys to move between markers. N moves to the next marker, B moves to the previous marker. And it's also possible to add a marker control in the top bar. And this allows you to move between markers this way. And if you make it a bit bigger, there's room for more markers. So this allows you to easily navigate to certain sections within the song. And I must say that I always use this method in every Cubase project that I do. But there's much more to markers, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But by now, if you found this video useful already, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring the little bell icon if you want to know when I publish another video. I also have many affiliate links in the description below, and if you buy anything after clicking one of those links, I get a small commission and it doesn't cost you anything extra. But let's get back to markers now, because there's another type of markers and they are called cycle markers. And those are added with the second button in the marker track. Let's first put our cycle somewhere. And if we now click this button, you can see that the cycle marker has been added over here. 
and you can add these in various ways. The first one I showed you was that the cycle marker gets set to the locate the position. But if I go back to the pencil tool over here, you can see that I can also add cycle markers by drawing them. If I push control at the same time, And another handy way to set a cycle marker is by selecting an event then pushing P for part. In that case, the locators are set exactly to the start and the end of the event. And obviously if I then push the cycle marker button, a cycle marker is added. You can of course edit the beginning and end of these cycle markers again by just dragging these corners over here. And you can name them again. just like you can do with position markers. Now you may wonder, so what's the use of those cycle markers? Well, I'll show you because now there's also a cycle button over here and you can select a certain cycle marker. And what you see that happens is that the locators are then set to exactly the cycle marker pair that you selected. Or what you can also do is you can use it to zoom in to that part of the project. You can also do the same thing by double clicking on the cycle marker over here or double clicking while holding the old button to use the zoom function. Now a very nice thing about cycle markers is that you can also use it to export certain parts of your project. For example, imagine that this was a full live recording of maybe, I don't know, an hour or more. Then you could indicate the individual songs with these cycle markers. They would of course be named different then. And if I now go to the export dialog, you can see that over here, I can select that I want to use cycle markers for which range needs to be exported. And if I now click all four cycles, I would be able to make four different exports of this song, which coincide with exactly the cycle markers that I set. Now, a nice thing about that is that you can also indicate a naming scheme and you could, for example, put cycle marker name in here to get the export named after the song name or maybe you want to include the number of the cycle marker in front of the song, then you would get a name just like this, one dash song. So this makes it very easy to create multiple exports from one Cubase project and naming those exports as you named the cycle markers. Now, so far I've shown you the use of a single marker track, but Cubase actually allows to have multiple marker tracks. Let's have a look at what this could be used for. Now in this project, you see that the first marker track I've used to indicate my song sections. Now one use for multiple marker tracks could be if you have multiple songs in this one project. For example, I could add another marker track and call it songs. And in here I could now add cycle markers to mark the songs. For example, this one would be song one and etc. etc. like I just showed you in the export example. Now another way that I sometimes use a marker track is if I want to mark certain positions in the song that I need to work on. For example, I could call the marker track to do's. And then whenever I mix or produce the song, I could add markers indicating what still needs to be done. For example, add sub bass or maybe in bar 10. I need to tune the vocal a bit. And in bar 18, I might have the idea that I need to add a vocal throw delay, for example. Yeah, so I will mark certain positions in the project that I want to change or enhance or do something to later. And in this marker dialog, you can see that I can switch between the marker tracks. So over here, I have my song section markers. And over here, I have my to do's. You can see that even if the marker track is not active, I can still use these buttons to navigate. But if I want to use the number buttons on my keyboard, that works based on the active marker track. Now, if you stayed this long in this video, you must really be enjoying these deep dives into Cubase techniques. And therefore, I think you would probably also be interested in checking out this video on the audio warp features in Cubase. So have a look, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.